Hello, welcome back to the Cricket Nerds. It's all three of the boys back again talking about two games. Um, we've got a lot to catch up on. We've got Chennai Super Kings versus Gujarat Titans, where Chennai won by 63 runs. And then we've got Sunrisers Hyderabad versus Mumbai in the highest scoring game of all time. It was absolutely yeah. ridiculous. Um, let's talk about that one first. I know it's not in chronological order, but it was so ridiculously stupid that it's worth talking about. Um was there any point in being a bowler in this game or should they have just set up a bowling machine at one end and just fired down some bowling machine balls, see how yeah. many you can hit out of the park? Yeah. That's I, how it looked. I think your tweet uh, that you sent out and, you know, X or whatever we call it these days, followers on X, we bring some quality content there that just said bowling machine stuff was pretty much summed up this game today because, I mean, that's what it looked like. Um I mean, being a bowler in today's game was just horrendous. I think there were a couple of really exceptional overs that were bowled. I think the first one from uh, Quenya McCumfer, who, you know what, was all right for his first over. Um, and then it all sort of went downhill from there. Um, but yeah, young overseas from, from South Africa, left arm quick, bowled one good over. And then, I mean, everything else just went, to the fences, didn't it? Jasper Brum was yeah. a cheat code again. Well, but... I mean, nines and over isn't exactly cheat code stuff. And you know it's a road when Jasper is yeah. going at um, go for 36 without taking a wicket. What I did really enjoy today was that Travis Head broke the record for the fastest Sunrise 50, uh, getting it in 20 balls. And then about a few overs later, four overs later, Abhishek Sharma broke Travis Head's record that he just set for the fastest Sunrisers 50. Um, yeah. I mean, it was just record-breaking stuff today. Like, it's just, there, there aren't any words for a 500-run T20 game. It's absolutely mad. I mean, I think it's just, well, it is a coincidence that Benj and myself are, are wearing orange today for Sunrisers. Um, we don't support the Sunrisers, but it's just a bit a bit of a coincidence. Mark of respect. Um, yeah. <laughs> Out of respect, obviously, um, but yeah, it was it was mad. I mean, we talked about Jasper Bumrah potentially he should be opening the bowling as it doesn't matter. Yes, you want to save him for the death, but at the same time, he can provide you such a great platform. And giving the new ball to Quenna Mafaka on a pitch which is obviously batter friendly, I just felt sorry for him a little bit. I know he bowled well in his first over, but it just seemed. Like he just got tonked around in his first ever outing. I think I'll learn a lot from this, um, but I, I do question that the thought of not opening up with Jasper Bumrah in the first over. I mean, him going at nines and over in this match was the equivalent of him probably going at threes in a normal twenty twenty match. That's how high the scoring was. But it was just clean hitting. You still have to make the runs, even yeah. if it's a batter's wicket, and just the. We know that Travis Head is in great form. We know that Heinrich Klaassen is in great form. And then Abhishek Sharma, his innings was just... For me, he was, his man of the match was, was deserved because he provided the impetus throughout those middle overs to, to put Sunrise at a score which is just unattainable. However, saying that, Mumbai did give it a good go. And at one yeah. stage, the win predictor was slowly rising in their favour. Um, James, do you want to talk about Mumbai's response? Yes, because um, it, it was it was a it was a decent crack. Uh, they definitely started out right with Rohit Sharma and Kishan just hitting the hitting the leather off the ball. Um, they were absolutely smoking it all over, and uh, Nam and Deer as well. They, they did exactly the right thing, where it was just you've got to get after it as much as you can early because. The one thing that Sunrisers Hyderabad didn't do was take, make the most out of the first over. That was about all you can kind of criticise from them. But Mike Agarwal went went at less than a run a ball. He went he got eleven off thirteen, so that probably denied Sunrisers getting three hundred. Mm. Um, but it meant that Mumbai were like, right, okay, if we can get after it from ball one, because we know it's a road then maybe we've got a chance. And they did have a chance. Um, what they needed was from for one of their top three 
to have a a Clarsen or Head or Abishek like innings yeah. where they could have just absolutely, you know, just built a big partnership that really puts the pressure on the bowlers. Yeah. But credit to Sunrisers was that they managed to take some slightly regular wickets, um, even though the strike rates were well into the two hundreds. They took regular wickets and it meant that it slowed down the momentum quite a bit. Um, yeah. It is worth talking about a bit of a smelly innings, which was Captain Hardik Pandya. Yeah. And this feels so harsh because 24 off 20, I mean, he, he gave it a decent go and like, you're basically just facing death bowling as soon as you get in. Um, but 24 off 20, when you're chasing... 277 to 278 uh it's it's not good enough is it and it's it's the harshest piece of criticism i think i can offer because (laughs) what what on earth are you meant to do in that situation um but yeah you know it it wasn't quite good enough was it It, i I do think it is harsh but at the same time they only needed, I say only, they needed 120 odd runs when he came to the wicket with five, with, with 10 overs left pretty much, or nine overs left. Um, and Hardik Pandya has seen him play those sorts of innings before. I know he scored 24 off 20. If you make that 40 off 20, an extra 16 runs makes it a lot closer, but it is harsh at the end of the day because it is just a lot to to ask, isn't it? Yeah. Um yeah, yeah. It, it is. I think, um, but also, I mean, we're we're missing an obvious point that Mumbai still hit two hundred and forty six runs, which is the second highest score in the IPL this year. Like, there's only been two of the, uh, yeah, two of the scores that have gone over over two hundred, two or three other scores. So, like, it's they they still had a very good go at it in that losing cause, um, and it's just. Yeah, the batting of sunrises. I think Hardik Pandya summed it up in his in his post match interview. If they score two hundred and seventy, they've batted well. And like, yeah, I mean that's that's what they did. Um, I am slightly on your side with this whole Hardik Pandya thing, James. I think he's looked like quite a selfish cricketer in the last couple of games. I didn't say that. You can't. You can't well, say I'm on your side and I then think, put words in my mouth I, like that. It, it's it's just a good feeling I've got, and I, you know, I might receive a bit of stick and a bit of hate for this, but like Jasper, uh, sorry, with with Hardik Pandya, like as long as he gets his four overs and bats in the top six, he seems to be happy with whatever the result is, and and he's doing that consistently every like in both games that we've seen so far. Like, actually, it is his captaincy costing Mumbai a, 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 a little bit. Like, we've not seen Nehal Wadira at all on this side as well, who both of you two touted as potentially ex- an exciting player for this year. Um, mm. So, yeah, I don't know. Just some thoughts there. But well, one an, thing an I, I want to touch on... breaking game. Yeah, one thing I want to touch on just before we move on really quickly was that the fact that Mumbai gave it such a good crack was really impressive for the whole net run rate situation. Yeah, because they're still only second from bottom, um, just on net run rate, and th- that's outstanding to say that they conceded two hundred and seventy-seven runs. Mm-hmm. And um, one thing where I one one area that I think Sunrise has really dropped the ball, um, pardon the the pun or whatever, but was bowling Mike Markande for the last over because he's a leg spinner, and on on a absolute road it's very difficult for a spinner to bowl death bowling. Yeah. And it didn't make a whole lot of sense to me when you've got somebody on that pitch that should be able to bowl 95 mile an hour Yorkers. Um, he can at least try. And that's how you're going to get your net run rate up. And it's obviously it doesn't matter too much, but it is a tactical decision. And really you need to be, especially in these early games, you need to be looking forward with net run rate because it is such an important factor. It, it makes quite a big difference on whether or not you need to, you know, bowl, uh, win, win certain games if you end up. Because chances are it's going to be quite an even table. A lot of teams are looking very strong. A lot yeah. of teams look like they're fallible as well. 
I think I don't think there's a single team apart from perhaps Chennai that look like they could win every game. Um, so it is important to to improve your net run rate. But let's move on. Um, Chennai versus Gujarat. Let's just go on to talk about what was another steady, a somewhat boring match. I'd say, in fact, in the in the way that Gujarat just never really were into it, were they? They it always looked like a Chennai match. Mm-hmm. Ratchan Ravindra is a is a rock star. Shivam Dube is a rock star. Samir Rizvi, I love him. The fact that he hit his first ball of the IPL for six of Rashid Khan. Mm. Was it first or second? First but, ball. Yeah. First ball. First ball. First, first ball. Uh, it's just, it's it, it's a shame that, you know, that was actually a really good game and it's yet been overshadowed by today so much. And I'm saying that as a Chennai fan. As a cricket fan, yeah, it's great. But as a Chennai fan, it's a shame that uh, the yes day, because yeah, Samir Rizvi, what a hero, came in, hits, hits 14 off six, two sixes, both off Rashid Khan. Um, Shivam Dube just being a, spi- a, 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 a hitter against spin, really just playing that role this year. Like, I think it's his, this is his third or fourth franchise, maybe CSK. And he's really come into it. Like, I, I think in the first year that CSK had Shivam Dube, they were playing him a little bit like an all rounder. But the last two seasons, they've just said, You're going to go in at number four. You need to just swing. Don't move your feet because, you know, that's. <laughs> That's that's not what you do. Just go in and swing that long handled bat and 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 do what what you can. The thing that really impressed me, particularly though, about Chennai yesterday, was their fielding and their catching, um, and not just from the the younger players, from the old boys too. And Jinka Rahane took a full length forward diving catch off the boundary, which you know at his age is very impressive. And MS Dhoni, great fielder. And Emma Stoney took that catch to the, to the side as well. They really impressed me. Um, whereas, yeah, in, in in the past, Chennai's fielding has been a bit of an issue in the last couple of years. If we think back to last year, we were talking about just how many times they dropped catches. But yeah, mm-hmm. you're right. Um, it, it didn't really seem that Gujarat were ever in it. And Mustafizur Rahman, what a pickup he's been. I, I wasn't particularly excited with the Fizz in the auction, but he's been perfectly he is such a good pickup for Chennai's ground it, it, it's a perfect bowler to have so yeah I was very pleased yesterday as a as a, as a CSK fan hmm. I think looking at Gujarat on the other side of things they I think we're going to say it most games with Gujarat is that there there's a massive um got on his name it's gone out of my head you. no bowler um oh Mohammed Shami Mohamed Shami, there's a massive Mohamed Shami size hole yes. in that bowling lineup. He gives you four overs, he'll take at least one wicket, and his economy rate's usually around the sevens and eights. And that is that's huge. That's like Jasper Bumra levels, um, Rashid Khan levels. And I know they've already got Rashid Khan in there, and he didn't have such a great game, but to to fill those overs with someone like Umesh Yadav. Plus, Asmatullah Omazai, we know he's an exciting young Afghan player who is filling the role of, of Hardik Panja, but he's not he's nowhere near the class of Hardik Panja. Mm-hmm. Plus, he's not got the captaincy that Hardik Panja brought to that side. So, yeah, they're missing some key players, which is kind of letting them down. Um, and and I think that's, that's an issue for Gujarat moving forward because looking at that bowling lineup, it does look light. It does look like they're missing some some star quality players. Um, whereas when you compare that with a side like Chennai, Chennai for me have been the best bowling side so far in in the limited games that we've had, um, and, and that compared with combined with their impressive batting is, is going to make it hard for teams to beat them. Um, but when you look at the Gujarat Titans batting, I mean Sai Sadarsan, we know he's a good player, but he just isn't scoring quick enough at the moment. And if he wants to take it to the next level to be that star for Gudra in the middle order, he is going to need to score quicker. Um, probably strike strike rate up that to around the 150s. Because um, otherwise, they're relying on someone like David Miller David Miller and Rahul Tawatia to bring them home almost every single game. Um, and, and that's going to be something they're going to work on. However, saying that, I think Gudra came up against a very good Chennai side and I see Gudra winning more games than they lose this tournament still. Um, I don't know what your thoughts are on Gujarat, James. Yeah, I'd, I'd echo what you said. I think um, 
there are quite a few of their players that have a great ability to to go fast, but they also have the ability to kind of slow down quite a lot. Um, mm. yeah, if I read him Saha, he got off to a bit of a flyer and he slowed down, ended up with a strike rate of 120. Um, Shumman Gill, he got himself out, to be honest, just swinging across the line. And then Sysad yeah. Arson, he's the other one that I was thinking of that, yeah, completely, he can, he can bat, you know he can, but he, um, he protects his wicket a little bit too much for T20, perhaps. I think he'd be an excellent, you know, 50 over and, and test match player. And I, th- I think he is a really good, uh, he's got so much potential for T20. He just needs yeah. to almost forget some of that ingrained knowledge of protect your wicket with your life and throw the bat around a touch more, take a few more risks and, and it, it might get him a little bit more success. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, Sighted Arson, he's played three ODIs and he's already hit two fifties and he averages mm. 63 in ODI. So mm, he's yeah. pulled it into that format of the game. But yeah, I agree with, with, with what you've said there. One last yeah. thing I want to touch on is how good must it be to be MS Dhoni in a packed Chepawak stadium? Specialist wicketkeeper, isn't he? Pretty he is. And, and also, so like, there's no, he, he never has to bat. So he's fully chilling. And if he does anything, no matter what it is, he gets the biggest cheer. So I know that like the, the grey cricketer kind of um, slated his catch a little bit because it was getting way more press than it deserved. It was like, it was a, it was a decent catch, but it wasn't like the, you know, the biggest world ending catch we've seen. Catch. Mm. But my favourite bit was when um, the ball was like defended or just nudged off someone's pads and Dhoni runs to square leg to pick it up. <laughs> and it was honestly yeah. like the final wicket had been taken in the World Cup. <laughs> the cheer from around that ground was insane. Mm. And all it was was <laughs> Dhoni running yep. for a ball at square leg. Yeah. So, the, the guy's a rock star. Um, he's obviously earned all the accolades. And yeah, it's just funny to watch him. Thing is, know, like anything he does, he gets a big cheer. The right game this season, he's going to come out to bat. He's going to be- come up the order, come out at five, six or seven. And the people are going to lose their minds. Um, and yeah, it's it's going to be glorious. If yeah. this is definitely his swan song, which well, it I, might be, but yeah. I think it will be, you know. Um, but yeah, it's... it's it's going to be interesting to see how how Dhoni, what he does for the rest of the season, what he can bring. Um, so, yeah. But, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Uh, it's been great to bring you this podcast. We're going to be bringing you so much more from this IPL. Uh, it's, it's an exciting one so far. So if you've enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, you can also support us further that by becoming a member, which gives you lots of extra perks. There have been members' videos coming out. We're going to bring more of those. So if you want to see those exclusive videos, become a member. You can also follow us on social media. As Benji's already said, the links are all in the link tree down below. And just to finish, stat of the day, Heinrich Klaassen hit his first four in the IPL after hitting 11 sixes first, oh which is word. ridiculous. Like, imagine. So it's crazy. <laughs> but there, we can bring more of that. So stay tuned and we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.